Hello, and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Gina Borgia, and I am so glad you are joining us today. This month, we're celebrating Asian American, Pacific Islander American, and Jewish American Heritage Month. Many of our explorers identify with these heritage groups, and we encourage our viewers to look into the histories and present day contributions of these incredible individuals in your communities and across the globe. At National Geographic, we know the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. This Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. Today, our explorer is Maurice Onanyango. Maurice is an award-winning journalist and filmmaker who has made TV shows and films. He loves telling stories with photography and he covers a wide range of subjects, including conservation, health, social justice, and human rights. Maurice has a keen interest in raising awareness for animal rights and giving nature a voice. And today, Maurice is going to share how he advocates for animals, including snakes, through his photography. But before we get into today's lesson, let's welcome our viewers who registered in advance and are joining us today from around the globe. Our shout outs for today's episode go to 191 Virtual, LB Clark Middle School, Jordan Matthews High School, Barker Middle School, Aquinas Montessori School, DW Babcock Elementary School, Planet English School, Edutab Africa, Stuart M. Townsend Elementary School, IBIME Montes, and all of our homeschools out there. We are so thrilled to have you all here. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Maurice to share all about how he advocates for snakes and other animals through photography. Okay, take it away, Maurice. Thank you so much, Gina. And um, thank you for having me in the Explorer Classroom. I'm excited to be here and to share with the uh, with the students about my work and why I do what I do. So thank you so much for having me today and I'll share about a bit my work and my background. So um, I'll, I'll start uh, with, the, with the short background about where I come from before I share about why I advocate for snacks and what made me start doing photography. Um, uh, photographing snakes and other reptiles. So uh, a bit, bit a, a brief background for about myself. I come from Kenya. Kenya is um, a country in Africa, in the east uh, part of Africa. Um, we have fifty five countries in the continent. So I come from one of that of those countries, which is called Kenya, and the, the one that the arrow points at, and that's um, me when I was about I think five or six years old. So um, during that time, I used to watch a lot of um, National Geographic television uh, documentaries and films and news and reading about and, and newspapers and reading about wildlife. And I really loved what I saw, the photographs and the videos they used to, I used to see like really beautiful photos and, and videos. And at that period in time, I told myself that when I, I, I grow up, when I become old, I would want to to also do that kind of work and travel to the different parts because uh, parks we have in the country because in Kenya we have several national parks so uh, it was my dream that when I grow up I would want to visit these parks and not just visit but also come out uh, take uh, out some photographs about the wildlife in, in those spaces so when I grew up, that's what I started doing. I went to school, uh, journalism school. I was taught photography. And one of my first assignments was actually to go into the park. So different parks, I've filmed in different parks, like uh, the lion that you can see here, that was in um, in Olpegeta. The the hippo and the bird is, uh, the bird is called um, a cattle egret that was in Amboseli National Park. So I started living that dream of traveling and photographing from the different national parks in the country. Um, here is um, my favorite animal. We all have our favorite animals. Uh, some, their favorite animal is a dog, others it's a cat. Mine is um, in the, I, I love dogs, but now when it comes to wild animals, the elephant is my favorite animal and I love photographing elephants. Uh, this one, I photographed it in Mpala 
it's also an, a, a park in, 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 in central Kenya. And also uh, had a chance to photograph a giraffe, uh, beautiful creatures, tall and always inquisitive. Like it looks at you like you, you, it wants to communicate to you, asking you why you're photographing me. Um, the other thing I love photographing and uh, why I love photography is birds. Um, when you take a photo of a bird, they always have a character. It's always like the bird is communicating to you. Like if you can look at the first photo, the two birds on top of the of the buffalo, it's like they're talking to each other. The middle one is an ostrich. It's, it's kind of looking at me like, why are you photographing me? It's communicating in a way. So that is one of the reasons as to why I love photographing wild animals, even though they cannot speak. Their action, if you look at their eyes, they communicate in one way or another. Um, this is uh, a blue whale, uh, 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 a whale that I photographed in, um, in one of the oceans in, in, in Africa. And this is, uh, I consider this one of my best moments because um, these are two um, wildebeests. We have one of the seven wonders of the world is the is the wildebeest migration from the Serengeti to the Masai Mara. So what you see here is the crossing of the wildebeest from Serengeti in Tanzania, crossing into Kenya. One of my best moments in, in, in photography and wildlife photography again, um, elephants. And um, now when I started doing the photography, I used to do it for fun. But there was also the issue of poaching, and 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 and, and poaching uh, simply means um, when bad guys um, take away, uh, let's say from from an elephant, they take away the 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 horn, the the ivory. So for for commercial purposes, they take away the the horn to sell it away. So when I started doing photography for for wildlife. I kept on hearing stories of elephants being um, ivory being poached and elephants being uh, killed in, in, in our national parks for the sake of the ivory. And it, it, it never made sense to me because when you look at an elephant with its ivory on, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful animal and it looks majestic like, like you can see here. It looks beautiful with the with, with, with the with the ivory on it. So it never made sense to me why would someone want to take away that beauty from that animal and destroy it. So and there were a lot of stories that were being done in the media about elephant poaching and also rhinos. Also, rhinos face the same uh, predicament as the elephant, where some guys take away their horns, so they destroy it. Uh, they, they they kill the uh, the, the, the mostly sometimes they uh, kill the the rhino to take away the horn, and and these stories were I used to see these stories in the media. So when I started doing photography, I also wanted to use my work to amplify that voice that these animals they 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 are beautiful with their with their horns. They are beautiful with their ivory. So that's why I started doing the kind that kind of photography. Um, and th this photo here is uh, uh, of um, the two rhinos. One is called, it's the daughter and the mother. Uh, and, and the daughter and the mother is Najin and Fatu. These are the um, Northern white rhinos. And in the entire world, we only have two of them remaining today. And this is because of uh, poaching and wildlife crime. Like people have killed all other rhinos of the same species for the sake of their horn. And at the moment, we only have two of them. So can you imagine an entire species in the entire world from thousands and thousands of northern white rhinos? Today, we only have two of them. And this is because of greed and greed of a few people who, who take it away because I don't, know, I don't understand why they do it. So um, Part of my photography, one of the saddest moments that I've had to photograph is uh, this particular moment, whereby um, for the sake of keeping the rhino safe, because the bad people, when they want to take away the horn, they sometimes kill the rhino. So for the sake of the rhino to be kept alive and to, to, to protect it from these bad people, they now take away uh, in a controlled way, they take away the horn and they keep it safely. In, in, in a safe place so that the rhino can live. But 
for me, the grid doesn't make sense because the animal looks beautiful with, the, with, with its horn on it. Doesn't make sense why we have to do this, but because it is, a, it, it, it is necessary to keep them alive, this is what we have to do now. So now you'd ask then why snakes? Why photograph snakes? Or why is it important to photograph snakes? Um, for me, um, I'm fascinated by snakes because of um, one, the beautiful creatures. And then two, we have um, more than 3000 species of snakes. And we have the ones that are dangerous and we, we have others that are not uh, that deadly. So, but the, 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 the reason as to why I started photographing snakes is because I was fascinated. I have, I fear them, uh, I have the phobia of snakes, but I'm fascinated by the creature itself. So I'll just share a few quick facts about photos uh, about snakes. Um, and these are some of the photos that I've taken. Um, snakes, they don't have eyelids. They don't have, um, like, like us, it, can't, it doesn't close the eyes the way we do. It doesn't have its eyelids. Uh, another fact about, about snakes is that they do not have physical ears. They have, um, the ears are not external. You can't see an ear on a snake. And then another fact that um, fascinates me about snakes, even though the snake here looks like it's uh, the face, the entire face is made up of, um, of, of a nose, the snake, um, it, it uses its tongue to smell. Like the way you see, when you see a snake has taken out its tongue, it means that the snake is um, it's smelling. It's looking for something maybe to eat, or it just want to understand the kind of um, environment it is in. And then, so, but why really snacks? Why photograph snacks, even though they're fascinating, even though um, you have like 3,000 species, why should I care about taking photos of snacks? Um, this snack here is called the Mount Kenya Bush Viper. It's only found within Kenya. And one of the reasons as to why I was interested in photographing this snake is that most Kenyans don't know about its existence, but there are some bad people who know about his ex of its existence, and they've been taking it away from Kenya and taking it to other countries like in Europe and the USA. So they're destroying, they're killing the, the snakes, and um, they have really taken so many of them from the wild until we don't have them anymore and they have become an endangered species. So the reason as to why I started photographing such kind of snakes is because I wanted to tell Kenyans that, look, this is, um, you have this uh, animal that is, uh, is in your country, but you don't know that it exists and bad people are taking advantage of that and taking them away. This is another, um, uh, another species uh, also only found in Kenya. It's called the Kenya horn viper. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, it has like two tiny horns on its head. And it also faces the same threat as um, the Mount Kenya bush viper, whereby some bad people have been taking them away from the wild and selling them abroad. So I started doing the stories to tell Kenyans that we have this animal that is in your country that deserves to be there and it's being taken away and being sold um, away and destroying the environment because it has, these species have their role that they play in the ecosystem. So when they're taken away, our ecosystem suffer in one way or another. So through my photography, I, I wish to, um, to document the challenges that the uh, challenges and the threats that they face. And also so that um, I can bring attention of relevant authorities and relevant uh, individuals to uh, protect this wild animal because it needs protection. Without the protection, um, we're going to lose them because um, with, with that, the number of them that are remaining in the wild, it's too small and it needs our protection. So um, that's a little bit about um, the snakes and why to grasp them. Uh, just a small uh, about the gear that I use. That's my, my camera. 
and then there's um, I use a, a lens because when you photograph snakes, personally I have a phobia for snakes, so I always keep a distance. I have a lens that takes care of that, so I, I keep my distance and take the photo from uh, far away. And um, also the things that I consider while working in the in in, in the field, uh, especially when photographing uh, animals like snakes, because we have deadly snakes and um, I work with experts. So when you see a snake in your garden, don't go to take a photo of it or don't go, don't approach. Um, it's only an expert who can tell you if this is a deadly snake or it's not. So don't approach a snake because you've seen it, because even some of the experts have to ask some other experts if the snake is dangerous or not, it's not dangerous. So I always work with experts. So consider some of the things that I consider before going out to shoot film or photograph a snake, an animal like a snake, I go with an expert. Something else that I consider is patience. Um, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. And this might apply, this also applies to even me because um, the first time I had, I have a phobia for snakes. So the first time I went out to photograph snakes, um, the, Mount, the Mount Kenya bush viper, I took a lot of photos that most of them were not good. So I had to be patient enough and, and, and take as many as possible and learn and so that the next time I can take better, a, a better photo. So it took like a while for me to just get into that space to be comfortable taking photos of snakes. And I think that applies to you as well. Like if you're trying to learn something new, maybe playing uh, football or playing soccer or any activity that is um, you feel that you're not good at, it only takes patience and practice, and then you become good. So the same applies to for when you, you want to do photography for wild animals. And also something else that I consider was uh, personal safety, because uh, it's important to, when you're doing uh, photos of something like a snake, to consider your own personal safety, how you dress. It's also important, like I had to wear boots, because when you're going to the bushes, you don't know what you're going to step on or what's going to be lying next to where your foot is. So you have to consider such kind of things. So Asanteni Sana, uh, Asanteni is a Swahili word. Where I come from, we speak a language called, called Swahili. So Asante is Swahili for thank you. Oh. Well, we're going to end with our last question, a question that we'd like to ask all of the explorers who come onto our show, we'd like to know, Maurice, how can we take on your mission? How can we tell stories with photographs? Or do you have any general advice for the young explorers out there? Yes, um, my advice would be start from your own backyard. There's a flower in your backyard. There's uh, your pet, your dog, your pet, your cat. So start with that kind because we, the issue is telling stories with photos, telling stories about our environment with photography. So start with that thing that is next to you, like your pet dog, your pet cat, your, your, the backyard, there's a bird in your backyard or there's a flower in your backyard. Use your phone, take nice photos and just share it with someone, with your friend, your parent, your teacher, show them and let them tell you what they think about the photo or what the photo communicates to them. Like if you share a photo of your, your pet sad or happy, do they get the same kind of uh, interpretation of the photo? If the pet is happy, will they say it looks happy or will they say, why does it look bored? So take photos of what is next to you and try to get in character, take the photos in a way that tell a story so that someone who looks at the photo can have an interpretation and tell you what they think. And then you can also tell them what you think about the photo. And for me, that's how you start telling stories about what matters to you, because what matters to you, and then it, it, it will, when you, when you grow up and expand, you start telling stories of something else that matters to you, be it wildlife, be it social justice, be it education or health, stories that matter to you. So start where you are with what you have. So, in your backyard, your pet, with your phone, or if you have a camera, just start there. 
Thank you so much for that wonderful advice, Maurice. And thank you for taking the time to be here with us and to sharing about your amazing work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me as well. I'm happy to be here. It's been a good experience. Wonderful. And of course, we have to say a big thank you to all of our students out there. Thank you for your thoughtful questions. We appreciate you. And thank you, of course, to our teachers for making these wonderful events happen for your students. I hope you join many more of our events here on Explore Classroom. Next week at this time, we'll join Explore Pablo Papi Garcia Borbugalu to learn all about how he tracks penguins in Patagonia and helps protect their habitat. We are nearing the end of our school year here at Explorer Classroom. We only have a few weeks left, so you won't want to miss what we have in store for you in these final weeks of our Explorer Classroom programming. You can register for um, your student group for a shout out during the event and a chance to be on screen with us at natgeoed.org backslash Explorer Classroom. I hope everyone has a lovely day. Stay curious, keep exploring, 